Today I would like to share with you how to color these cherries with Copic markers. They're the cherries that I used on a card last week and I thought I would just explain basically how to color with the Copic markers. I am beginning with an R20. Oops, excuse me. I'm going to color the whole cherry with the R20. This is a very pale pink. I could leave a place that was just the white of the paper, or actually this is a, a natural white, so it's a bit ivory. Um, I'm not going to do that. A cherry is shiny, so I could get by with that, but I think I'll go back instead with a clear blender and get any highlights back that I need. That was an R20. I'm using an R24 next. I think this is the only marker that I'm using that Ellen does not carry and I could skip it and just go straight to an R29 but it would take me more time to blend and I have only about 10 minutes on YouTube to be able to get this entire thing on so I need to make sure that I finish in time. That's why I'm using the R24. I'm not worried yet about the splotchiness. I will go back and take care of that. I'm using an R29 next. This is a nice deep red. And finally, an R59 or 89, whichever one of those you might happen to have. Either one will work. Something of a burgundy there. Probably will not need it again. I do need my R20 back though. When you're blending two different colors, rather than using your clear blender, take the lighter color that you've worked with. So here I was working with an R20 and an R24. I want to use the R20 to blend. See? That's already pretty much blended there. I can go in with this one next. On this cherry, I'm going to take my R24 next and add a little more pigment in here. Blend again. Remember, I can go back with my clear blender and reclaim highlights if I get it too dark in places. Just switching off, working with whatever color seems to be needed at the moment. Okay, I think I'm ready to go back to my R29, my deeper red there. It's looking pretty good on the cherries. I could go in with my clear blender and pull out a bit of a highlight. I'm just going to dab at it and then move back because it will keep fading. You don't want to just scrub and scrub or you will take too much color out. Okay, I think I'm ready for my leaves now. I'm using a YG91. It's a fairly muted green. I use this color quite a bit. I'll be using a YG95 next. I'm going to go ahead and color the cherry stems in. Cherry stems are mostly green. They get a little browner as they get up near the woody part of the stem. So I'm using an E55 to add a bit of brown in there. I'm going to go back with a darker green, the YG95. Add a little bit of veining in my leaves and a little bit of darkness maybe near the base of the leaf and on one side. Then I'll go back again with your lighter color and just kind of scumble that edge. I think the leaves will work now. The next thing I want to do is add a bit of shadow in there. I'm using a W1. My light source is coming from the upper um, right. <laughs> have to think about that for a minute, sorry. Anyway, upper right with a light source, so I'm going to want to have my shadow on the lower left. I will soften this. I don't want to get too close to that red, 
or I'll probably make it bleed because it's such a strong color. I want to avoid just getting right up on that. Next, I'm going to use my clear blender again. Scumbling that edge. Let me just mention that you need to keep plenty of fluid in your clear blender. If it gets dry, you're likely to damage the tip. Plus, it's not going to work as well for you. A dry clear blender is a very frustrating tool to work with. You keep it nice and wet and you'll be fine. Now I want to add a little bit of a yellow glow in there. I could stop here, but I'm going to add a bit of warmth around here. This is a custom filled pen. I used about half and half zero clear blender and um, YR31, but a Y21 would give you a very similar look if you happen to have Y21. I like both of those pale yellows a lot. Kind of a buttercup, pale buttercup yellow. Now, I mixed it with clear blender just to make it a bit lighter and therefore easier to blend in to the paper. So I want to take my clear blender now and soften that edge. Edges do not have to be soft. Sometimes a hard edge is nice. I generally use soft edges, but that's personal preference. And I know people who shade with hard edges all the time and have great looking work. So I'm not saying that you have to know how to do this, but I really like to have soft edges. Okay, I think if I maybe take a bit more of a highlight out on the cherries, that will continue to fade. Uh, maybe a hair more out of the green there because contrast is always nice. And then I think if I let that dry, my image should work just fine and it's going to be very similar to this one once it dries. Thank you for visiting the classroom.